So what dreams does the queen have? Mm. <laughs> you know I'm going to get nosy. <laughs> I this know. is not going to be uh, I knew this was coming. You knew it was. <laughs> That's a really good question. I, I, I dream of a lot of things if you're referring to music. She cleaned the hotel room. I've always dreamed of making great music and having a long career. You can't love nobody else. Sing it to me. You can't love nobody else. And on top of that, everything on top of the, having a musical career that, you know, I can continue to be a part of for the rest of my life. That's everything. Now, the icing would be, you know, Georgia Music Hall of Fame, um, getting my scholarship program back up and running. A lot of it has to do with tying up some loose ends at this point, I think. Why do you think you have not hit it? You've been on the Grammy nominations list mm. two times. And one of your albums hit number eight on the Billboard Blues chart. You were and you want to be free. Why do you think you haven't had that national recognition where you're not just a household name in the Southeast, you're a household name everywhere. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I, I don't know, it's probably timing, it, it's circumstantial. And I think early on in my career, when I was signed and people were really trying to sell my record and push me over the top, I was very resistant. And I think I was afraid. And I, I had a difficult time trusting people for a long time. Really until, I don't know, the past decade or so. so. <laughs> well, I'm, just, uh, I'm a naturally suspicious person. And that you get in, into the music industry and, and gosh, you know, there's a lot to consider. So. Clive Davis signed you to Arista. He also signed Whitney Houston to Arista, mm. but he changed Whitney Houston from who she was mm. to the pop princess that we knew, but she was still somebody else off the screen. Mm. How did they want to change you? I don't know that they really did. Um, I had a lot of creative freedom in that agreement and maybe too much. I mean, I, I was 21, and it's very difficult to see the future, to know what you want and how to get there, so at that age, at any age, but especially at that age. At that age, she was at Agnes Scott College, and after her freshman year, she moved into the Emory Woods Apartments, a kind of petri dish for budding musicians. A friend of mine told me about uh, this music group called the Indigo Girls that she loved and I had to see them so she dragged me to the dugout which was this little club across from Emory University where they were performing and uh, yeah we became friends I enjoyed their show we went out to the Majestic yes where we were chatting and it came up that I played music because I did have a guitar and was writing songs but I had never played out uh, professionally. My intention was not to go be a professional musician because I was in college and I wanted to be a doctor and why I don't know. I, I was just really interested in it. And um, then after meeting Amy and Emily and becoming fast friends, you know, long story short, we became friends. We recorded together, toured together, and um, I moved into those apartments 
that summer after my freshman year, because Amy lived there. And then I was there almost at least 20 years. I could have bought the building. I mean, it's absurd. I had a record deal. I had a publishing deal. I had money. Could have bought a house. Didn't do it. 21. Hashtag 21. That's what I <laughs> But you were in an environment where your music grew because you were surrounded by people who were doing what you were doing. It's true. It was really a wonderful place to be. Uh, and, and then other musicians would stop by because there were so many, many musicians in the area. I remember Gerard McHugh coming over and uh, we would, you know, play guitar together. And Amy and I would play guitar together and always be writing and listening to music. I mean, it, you could hear music coming out of all the windows. I loved it there. And it was really <laughs> easy walk, go one block up the hill to Lux Street Records, a Rainbow Grocery, and uh, well, the Blockbuster used to be there, so, you know. <laughs> and Amy's on your new record, too. Amy's on my new record. Thank you all very much. I have these uh, friends that I came up with here in Atlanta in the industry, and we tend to sing on each other's records and collaborate. It's just a wonderful thing. I love the music community here.